Okay, so I'd like to start by saying uh, a little excerpt from Fight Club. That's awesome. Uh, it goes a little something like, uh, I look around, I look around. I see a whole generation of people pumping gas and waiting tables, slaves with white collars. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, buying shit we don't want, working jobs we don't need. We've all been raised on television to believe that one day we can grow up to be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars. We're slowly learning that fact. And we're very, very pissed off. Now, another part of that speech is, uh, you know, we have no great war, no great depression. At the time, that was true, but not really true anymore. But at the time, the thought was that we don't have any great war except a spiritual war inside ourselves. We don't have any great depression except our lives, which are depressing. We don't do anything. We're free to do whatever we want as long as we obey. And I'm here to tell you that they can't put regulations and rules on that. They can't just take a little bit away. They can't just take some of that or give you some of it because it's not theirs to give or take. It's not uh, something that's written on a piece of paper. You know what I mean? It's not something in 1776 that somebody wrote down and gave you the power to write in that document. It specifically says these are natural rights. Well, this document does not give you the power that we're, we're discussing here. It's just discussing it. So, I mean, don't let people tell you what you can and can't do. Because the only person who really controls you is you. A lot of people, they get stuck in this, this, uh, this mindset where they want to manipulate and control everything. I know, because I've been a part of that. I, I grew up in that society where, where, where this was important. You know, this is a picture of a handgun from a top-down view. I got this when I was 12, 13. And, and that's the type of society I grew up in. And I'm here today because I don't want to be a part of that society anymore. You know, I, I don't think that, uh, that it's important. You know, these, these material possessions, the, 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 for instance, I'll give you an example of material possessions. Banks get money at 0% interest, which means they don't have to pay anything but what they take back. And then they, they give it to you at a 6% interest, which means that even with all the money in the world, they will have to print more just so you can pay it back next year. This is what your taxes, your federal taxes, your income taxes, whatever it's at. And that just doesn't make sense. How can we print money so you can borrow it so next year we can print money so you can use that new money to pay back the old money? That's just not a system that's working. But if I give you a hot dog and I ask you simply to give me one back when I'm hungry, that's a 0% interest loan. And it's in my best interest. If I have, if I have 50 I'm loaves tired. of bread, right, if I have 50 loaves of bread, and if I take three loaves of those bread, because I know I'll consume three loaves of those bread in three days, right? I, I keep three loaves and I get 47 out. That's called a 0% loan, because I could not possibly eat three loaves of that amount of bread at the same time, it would go stale. If I kept the 50 loaves of bread, it would go stale. It would just be worthless. And that's what greedy people do. They hold on to the well. And, and uh, you know, that's just one idea. And I don't believe that anybody here should come here and hear what I say and follow my path and walk my line. I think that you should walk your own and you should interact. Uh, this is the community. So if you think some of us are extreme or out there, you need to speak up. You need to influence the group, the, the, the collective, and understand that your voice is here to be heard, not just, just listen to other people. So uh, that's, that's another reason why we're here right here, to save the Masonic uh, Lodge. Uh, they want to turn it into a pa uh, parking lot. And you might ask yourself, why would one person who owns it uh, want to turn it into a community arts museum and another person would want to turn it into a parking lot? And it's really simple uh, once you understand their point of view. And their point of view is they can individually, not as a community, because they're the, the community's leaders, they individually can make more money off a parking lot than, than uh, and they're the ones who make the decision. So that's a decision on their best interest. And it makes a lot of sense when you think about it like that. But what is really in our best interest? What is the people's best interest? I think the people want a place where they can go and take out some pen and paper and make a cool drawing and then paint a picture of that drawing and then make a YouTube footage of it and either give it to the, the community or keep, take it home because it's, it's theirs. They worked on it. The only thing they really borrowed are the condiments, like the ketchup on the hot dog, to make the picture. And, uh, you know, I think that people want that more, but the people aren't being hurt, they're being ignored. They, they just, they hear you in the background yammering like a little dog yipping. 
and they, they just ignore you. They say shut up and go away. But that's how you treat a pet. It's not how you treat a human being. Human beings have the ability to stand up and say, well, I'm not going anywhere. You know, they tell you to leave. You tell them, no, you leave. I was here first. You know, this is my community, I'm a part of it, and I'm gonna say what I have to say. You cannot like it. You don't have to like what I have to say, but you have to hear it. And even if I don't like what you have to say, I'll fight for your ability to say it. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's why I'm here, I'm here to support you. So, support the Masonic Temple. We are the 99%. He asked earlier, what is the 99%? What does that mean? That means it's a, it's a tax bracket, basically. It's a, it's a bracket where 1% of the, the America's population makes over 250,000 uh, or even millions, millions of dollars a year. Uh, this is what, uh, what uh, Mitt Romney called the middle class. He thinks that the middle class uh, getting tax cuts is $200,000, $250,000 a year. You deserve a tax cut. But then he, uh, he talks about the strike in, uh, in Chicago, which is not about money, by the way. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. It's not about money, it's about indoctrination. They, they want to be the teachers union of Chicago decided they didn't they want to be a part of their lesson plan more. They wanted to uh, to, to, uh, to affect it and influence it more instead of just this federal government mandate of how we should educate you. And uh, so what did he say about that? He said that seventy thousand dollars a year was too much for a teacher. So you're telling me that teachers aren't even in the middle class? What that's the one percent. That's the one percent who thinks that they can just take and take and take and take and there will be no repercussions. But I'm gonna tell you that every action has an opposite and equal reaction. And they just don't see it coming. They're not aware of it. Maybe they haven't turned on YouTube lately. Maybe they haven't watched globalrevolution.tv.com. You know, maybe they haven't looked on there and seen how many people across the world are really fucking pissed. And they're, they're upset and they're taken out in a lot of violent and aggressive ways. And basically what we're sitting here doing is what they were doing like six months ago. People in Greece are a year ahead of us. People in Spain are six months ahead of us. That means in six months, that's going to be us out in the street, pissed off, because our EBT cards aren't going to work anymore. Our, our, we're going to go to the, the mall. Oh, you can't do this. We don't accept debit cards anymore. It's new cards. It's an RFID card. It's an RFID check. You want to see what an RFID check looks? I can't show you, but I can show you what one looks like in the movie. It's very simple. It's your life, and you have to start living it. You have to be the one to start living it right now. No one's going to live it for you. Like I said, I want you to walk my path. I want you to walk yours, and I want to walk alongside you on your path and help you out. And I just hope the only thing I want in return is, is nothing. No, nothing. We, 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 we see everything, we understand everything, we know nothing. The, the government does not want you to obey. It wants you to want to obey. So disobeying is revolutionary in itself, saying no, we didn't get a permit for today. We didn't ask people, hey, can I come out here and do a little speech? No, fuck you, we, we don't need your permission. We don't need your permission to do what we can do. I don't, I don't, I'm not speaking today because, you know, the, the Constitution wrote that I could speak. I'm speaking because I have vocal cords. That's why I'm speaking. I'm standing here because my legs will hold my weight. And once you start seeing common sense, all this other bullshit just drifts away. You start watching TV and they're all talking about, well, here's some bullshit on TV and here's some graphs of some incidences of this bullshit on the rise. And here's a guy <laughs> from college, you know, who's pointing out a graph on it. He's just happy to be on TV because he went to school for years and years and years just so he could be appreciated on TV one time, you know? And there's a YouTube video called Bullshit, um, bullshit media dynamics and it explains how they just hide and mask reality behind stupid things that we don't actually care about and so so what you need to do is, is not expect a white shiny knight to come out because it's not going to happen there will be no superhero that's going to save the day frank castle's not going to jump out of comic book pages and start going cutting down bankers no you want that to happen if you believe in that in your heart you got to start doing it because no one's going to do it for you you be the superhero! Happen. Yeah, you be the superhero. You want superheroes in your life? Go be one. Get a mask, I guess. <laughs> and, and, uh, here's, a, here's a good point, too. Anonymous. Why is Anonymous wearing a mask? Because they're afraid. They don't want their families to get persecuted for their beliefs, which is what the system is doing right now. That's why they wear a mask. It's not because they don't want you to know who they are. That's why they're out there. They want you to know who they are. They just don't want you to trace it back to them because they're scared. I'm not scared. I don't wear a mask. I'm here. Families and you have so I hope you appreciate uh, you know, everything Chris Davenport and uh, I believe your name is Jeannie. What's your name? 
Jeanette. Now, I hope you guys appreciate everything Jeanette did. We're, we're eating a good meal today because of these people. And we're having a good conversation because everybody came out and tried, tried to discuss it. And we're already changing. You know, little ripples make bigger effects. So let's keep making little ripples. That was top of my head.